President Muhammadu Buhari has stated that the federal government alone cannot continue to carry the burden of financing university education in Nigeria. According to the president, the private sector must be involved because the burden is too much for the government alone. In the meantime, Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngige, has said the integrity test being conducted on the university transparency and accountability solution software being proposed by the Academic Staff Union of Universities will last between six and eight months. ASU, the umbrella body of Nigerian university teachers, has been on strike in protest against a number of contentious issues, including the federal government's preferred integrated payroll and personnel information system, IPs. We are now being joined for a comprehensive discussion around this subject by Professor Biodun Ogunyemi, President of the Academic Staff Union of Nigerian Universities, ASU. Professor Ogunyemi, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning, Ruben. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, it's good to see you again. Quickly, there's news out there that uh, there's likely to be another meeting between ASU and the federal government team tomorrow. But one uh, chairman of a branch of uh, your organization was also quoted as saying uh, there, is no, there, there is no invitation. That ASU has not received any invitation. What is the exact situation? Is there going to be a meeting tomorrow? The minister, uh, the PAMSEC Ministry of uh, Education and the Minister of uh, Labor and Employment, they've both been quoted as saying they've responded they've, uh, to all the... Uh, request from us to accept one, which is the uh, ongoing uh, attempt uh, to uh, assess and verify the proposed uh, UTAS from uh, ASU. What exactly is the situation? Well, thank you very much. I think there are three issues that are, that are involved in your question. Uh, the first one is about uh, whether we got invitation or not. The chairman of the branch is correct. To any meeting, we always expect a formal invitation. What we got yesterday evening was uh, a text message. Of course, uh, we are still awaiting a formal letter. Uh, we believe that letter will come today for tomorrow's meeting. Uh, as for addressing all the issues, except one, that is not correct. How do you address issues? You address issues by producing results. If you have taken step on one, two, three, four, can we see the results on ground? Our members have been asking questions. If government says we have addressed all their issues, are the retail salaries paid? BAA allowances that they promised to pay, have they paid? Uh, the inauguration of the visitation panels, has that been done? The uh, negotiation, has it commenced? So I've mentioned four issues now indirectly. Which of these have they delivered on? Our members are talking of deliverables, not promises. We have gone beyond the stage of promises because that's what we have been having since 2013. And uh, luckily you are there, 2013, when we signed the landmark memorandum of understanding under President uh, Goodluck Jonathan. You were there as the chief press secretary then. So, what we are saying is not totally new to Ruben. Uh, sorry to be personal, <laughs> but because you are a witness. And uh, since then, we have been having promises. We have gone beyond the level of promises. Uh, finally, on this thing about uh, Utahs, I want to say this idea of uh, six, eight weeks uh, is unfounded. I want to tell you categorically that if government uh, is sincere, if government is conscientious, about the process that is in motion now. Within one week, we can put the integrity test behind us. Uh, you can quote me on this. As at yesterday, we did the practical demonstration to uh, more than 30 experts, experts in NITDA. Utah was demonstrated at Utah yesterday. And none of the technical experts could fault what we have done. We are just waiting for their final report. And with that, we are good to go. Utah has no problem. Utah has no blemish. And uh, Utah is far, far uh, higher in integrity, 
in content and in validity over and above IPs. So there is no basis for comparison. So let no government official, no matter how highly placed, uh, slow down the process. Otherwise, our members will resist uh, with all legitimate means. I'd like us to talk about the revitalization fund, because what has captured most of the headlines has been the whole ipes utas debate, and that appears churlish of ASU insisting on telling, dictating to their employers how they ought to be paid. But let's talk about that important aspect of revitalization fund. Can you take us through exactly what that is and why ASU has decided to offer the federal government an opportunity to only pay half of the first tranche, which originally was supposed to be 200 billion naira, you have said fine, 220 billion naira, you have said fine, you will accept 110 billion naira. But the federal government's reply is that they cannot afford 110 billion naira, and all they've put on the table is 20 billion. Will you accept that? Well, our demand for the revitalization fund is a patriotic demand. Uh, luckily for me this morning, I have a witness in your studio. Dr. Ruben Abati was there in 2013 where we negotiated the revitalization fund. Before President Goodluck Jonathan accepted uh, to approve the six tranches totaling 1.3 trillion, he confessed that he was embarrassed at some point when he had to give a word for three consecutive years for research excellence in Africa. And he found that non-Nigerian, I mean, there was no single Nigerian scholar that was that recognized. And he said there and then that his government would not mind whatever it will cost uh, Nigeria to reposition Nigerian universities. That is ideological. It means that we have to situate our education into the, into the context of our development. And every government should decide what they want to be remembered for. We ought to ask this government, what does it want to be remembered for? I mean, we have not fixed electricity over five years. We have not fixed our roads. We have not fixed just anything. And we are saying that if only we can make a difference in education. Education is a catalyst to these other sectors. Be it security, be it economy, be it agriculture, be it industrialization. Just mention it. So what we are saying in essence is that revitalization is not spending. It is investment, an investment that will give this country the maximum yield in every sector of our development, every sector of our national life. So uh, we are saying that the demand for 210, uh, uh, 220, which we initially made, was one of the outstanding five tranches in the Memorandum of, uh, of, of Understanding of 2013. What we have always argued for since 2017 is that this government should not repudiate that Memorandum of Understanding because it had um, a scientific foundation. The 2013 uh, MOU was founded on the report of this assessment of Nigerian universities. In fact, we could trace the history back to 2000 and, uh, 2009 agreement, where we were talking of 24 federal universities. What we, what we proposed then was let us fix these federal universities so that it could serve as models for other universities in Nigeria. You know what China wants to do, what China has declared to do? They have uh, their research hub uh, in universities, and those universities are highly uh, uh, coveted, they are, they are cultivated and uh, generously funded in order to remain top notch, in order to make them uh, co conduct cutting edge research, which they have been using to develop uh, their country and to dominate the world. So, coming back to 2013 our MOU, the tranche that we're asking for is to ensure that government goes back to that path, the pathway that we set for fixing the rot and decay in our universities. But what we have seen with this government is that government has been promising tokenism. You gave 20 billion the other time. This time around you are saying you give 20 billion again as a sign of commitment. When will the commitment translate into investment? 2000 and, uh, 2013 MOU was about investment in education. 
was about addressing the established uh, decay and decadence that have uh, become uh, the lot of public universities in Nigeria. Today, we have um, over 45 state universities, over 43 universities, and we are still counting. So if we started with uh, 68 universities, now we have close to 90 or over 90 public universities. Even the fund we agreed to inject into the university system then would pale into insignificance if we actually to address the problem. But let us start from somewhere. It was when government started this game of blackmail, as it doesn't want to shift ground, that we said, OK, let's go back to our members. Let's consult our members. Our members said, well, let us show that we are also patriots and that we understand what they are saying. But we don't want 2013 memorandum of understanding to be repudiated. Let us ask for 50 percent. And we have shifted ground. But they keep saying ASU is unreasonable, ASU is obstinate, and all kinds of uh, uh, tragic labels which we don't deserve. We are patriots. We want this country to grow and develop. It is only education that can do that for us. All right, we want this country to grow and develop, and only education can do that for us. But I'm, I'm beginning to hear a couple of things that is really very sad. At uh, first, possible brain drain. I'm hearing about Ethiopia and, and some uh, Nigeria University lecturers. How can we keep our lecturers back here? And secondly, I want to tell you directly the words of the Labour Minister when he talked about Utah's this system. Uh, he granted an interview to, uh, on television a couple of uh, uh, week, uh, days ago. He talked about the fact that the Utah system has only passed through the user interface system, the user interface point. And that's where the point that they checked it with NIDA. NIDA said they are now going to look at other parts of that, you know, the workability and first and second test. So I just want you to react to that statement. And secondly, he said something at the end of that interview. He said, we have other options that very soon the strike should be called upon. If ASU is not playing ball, we have other options that we are keeping close to our chest. What's your reaction to those uh, two statements made by the minister? Well, as for the other tests for Utahs, I just said it a short while ago that yesterday our technical team was with NIDA. NIDA experts. The integrity tests we are talking about has perhaps got into its um, uh, highest level now. And uh, we just need a report from them uh, to document what they have seen, what they have, doc what they have commended. And once we have it in written form, uh, I think every doubting Thomas uh, will become convinced that there is nothing again to test. Uh, he has also been talking about, uh, as he's not talking of uh, hardware or software, or, all those ones, they were just, uh, uh, they were just off, off the point. The point really is, uh, we are talking about we are housing the uh, software, and NUC has a framework for doing that. We have been discussing with NUC. We have agreed that NUC will house it, and NUC will provide all the necessary backup for the application of uh, UTAS. So the, what the Labor Minister is saying, uh, we see it as a kind of discouragement, as a calculated attempt to slow down this process. And uh, our members will resist that. But talking about um, uh, um, other options, uh, we don't know what other options they'll be talking about. Maybe they want to go to court and uh, they want to intimidate the union into surrender. You don't do that with scholars. No country has ever survived it. No country has ever done it. Uh, because they have options too. Uh, you have just talked about brain drain now. I can tell you authoritatively, within the last two months, 25 scholars from uh, our universities in the, in the Northeast have been affected by this private university in Yola. We know the owner. So that is how it's happening. They are poaching the public universities now. Uh, I mean the private universities, because they can only thrive when public universities are not standing. And they are praying for that. They want more of that. They want private universities to crumble. And uh, our professors are highly sought after. What we are wanting Nigerian government to prevent, really, is to, is to prevent a second wave of brain drain. We had the first wave before we achieved the 
1992 uh, federal government also agreement. We were warning them that there were brain drains. When our scholars were fighting with their feet, already that is beginning to start. Yes, you mentioned Ethiopia. We are also aware that some few months back, uh, Ethiopia came to Nigeria and invested as, as many as 200 professors. And they are still looking for more. Uh, I don't know. For those who are in government, I, I don't know if they want uh, those political uh, appointees that they seconded into the universities to be, their, to be the teachers of their children. Of course, many of them, I would say 90% of them, don't have their children in public universities. That is why they cannot feel it. But our scholars are our national assets. We should not allow them to be decimated. And if anybody wants to attack, attack, uh, attack scholar through court action, uh, let me say it in disciplined form. You can force a horse to the river, but can you force it to drink? Uh, certainly, they will be physically there, but mentally, they will be elsewhere. And that will not profit this country. It's the worst thing that can ever happen to Nigeria. Well, um, Asu is reported to have written on his Twitter handle that his members should look for other ways of survival. Uh, would that be Asu directly recommending uh, that lecturers within the public system uh, should look for jobs elsewhere? And then, uh, if we are being told that there is no end in sight, and Asu is appealing to parents uh, for understanding, would there be any end in sight to this uh, fight? And has government been paying areas of salaries? Because government claims that they've been paying on one hand, Asu says no, nobody has been paid. What is the exact uh, situation? Well, thank you very much. In the first place, Asu does not have a Twitter handle. We have these impostors, uh, impersonators that have been operating a Twitter handle, or many Twitter handles uh, on behalf of the union. It is impersonation. We don't have anything to do with any Twitter handle. You can quote me authoritatively, authoritatively on that. Then, uh, talking about our members looking for alternative source of uh, survival, uh, it's a logical thing to follow. You don't even need to tell anybody that is hungry to look for uh, an alternative means of uh, satisf satisfying the hunger. You have children, you have dependents, you have uh, families to cater for. And uh, when the pressures come, you are bound to look for alternatives. If that is what our members will do, I don't think we can stop them. But government should know the implications. Because once scholars begin to operate with divided attention, it means you cannot get the best out of them. Our members, for too long, have put the whole of their lives into the system. We are talking of a system that will sustain a country here. And that is why, in other places, academic scholars are treated like haggards. You don't want to toy with them. You don't want to take them for a ride. But what we have seen in this country is that um, scholars are just treated as uh, people you can pick from the street and uh, you replace them. They are like um, casual workers. Uh, but we want to cancel, we want to strongly advise that Nigeria will be the loser if we should push them psychologically out of uh, their lifetime commitment. Because many of us went to this work uh, because we saw it as a lifetime commitment project. Uh, and uh, if we are discouraged, Nigeria will be the loser, I can assure you. And let me give you one clear example. This country, we are fond of talking of development partners. And uh, by the time we say development partners, if you have a graduate of technical college coming from China or, or America or somewhere in Europe or even Eastern Europe, we see them and we start treating them as if uh, they are superhuman. Whereas, when our scholars go to such places, they are highly uh, revered, they are highly respected, and they provide quality intellectual leadership. Uh, I'm sorry, there is somebody in that studio that can attest to this. We were at the presidency in 2013, and we had problem with electrical, uh, uh, we had electrical issue in that hall. The person that came to address it was a white man, and we were wondering, all of us were wondering, what is happening here? A technical fault in an air conditioner, 
You need a white person. Are these people you call your, tech, uh, your development partners? Your development partners, ideally, should be your scholars. And that is the example we have given them now. The youths we have developed has shown them that we have not actually tapped maximally into the potentials of our universities. In other places, every problem in the society, they throw into the university, go and address this problem, give us a solution. Nigeria is talking about local content. I, what is local content? Local content is about research and development. And those who will conduct the research that will lead to development, they are there in the university. Universities are our incubation centers for development. But we look elsewhere. We look elsewhere. And to worsen the situation, governments in Nigeria, they are fond of talking of consultants. And by consultant, they will look for maybe third class, second class, graduates from universities, they will empower them. Some people in the ministry will be their principals, and they will be pushing them to come and develop uh, programs like IPPIS, and they'll be coming professors to come and queue and enroll on them. Who trained these people they are calling consultants? Who trained every other person, every other worker in the universities? Are they not scholars? Are they not university teachers? So that is where we are missing it. We are missing the point. The moment we cannot see the connection between what scholars are doing and what we need to develop our country, every sector of our country, we have what it takes to develop if we empower our universities. So when the government says uh, uh, we cannot fund universities, we cannot, then you ask them, what can they fund? Are they actually looking for meaningful development? Or do they want to continue to borrow from those who will enslave them? And they will say they will bring development to them. Like Julius Nyerere will say, nobody can develop you. You are the only person that can develop yourself. And we have not come to that realization in Nigeria. And it is very, very sad. Our members are not happy about that. And that is why we are fighting this fight. It is a fight for our parents, for the parents of our students. It's a, it's a fight for our children. I have two children in universities. So when I say undergraduates are my children, they are all our children. I was, our colleagues there, many have three, four, five in the universities, public universities. So we are as concerned as any other person. So let nobody come from elsewhere and continue to pontificate uh, on how Nigerian uh, university teachers are unpatriotic or how they are on, uh, on, on concerned about what is happening to the children. The children are our children. What we are doing here is to make sacrifice for them so that in the future they will not ask us, Daddy, Mommy, what did you do when all these things were happening? Because we went to public primary, we went to public secondary. Now, we don't have enough confidence to send our children to public primary or public secondary. That is what private sector, the private sector mentality wants to happen to our universities. And Nigerian university scholars are resisting that because we know what Nigeria will lose in the process. We don't want it to happen. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Biodun Ogunyemi. As your president, thank you for joining us. Thank you.